guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting ring to episode one of the Aqua Trope and White Sands. Let's go ahead and get started in three, two, one, go. Oh, this is gonna make me cry like the world in colors all over again. I'm not ready for this. I wonder if they're going to put a reference to that in here. Oh, okay. Sad that it's closing now. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, she's so pretty. Oh, those shoes are gorgeous. Damn. It's upsetting to hear about that when you're walking in. You never know, by the end of this, she might come back. <laughs> I'm guessing we are probably not going to see Lynn's character and what's her face by the end of this episode. Maybe, but we'll see. No, I think that's her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Poor baby. I 
god, it's so pretty. Can I just say like Okinawa is giving me Florida vibes as a Floridian? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> no, I think she's good. Seriously? That's a little too much. Well, of course she sees because you have your suitcase. Oh my god, Fuka, don't be fooled by her. She's scamming you. Oh my god. Mm. Oh, Luca. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, because she's going to meet what's her face. <laughs> She should be close to seeing her. I know she has to go to their aquarium. Oh. Your hat flew away too, didn't it? Hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are we going to pray to the fish one more time? <laughs> I think her name is.
is mine, I believe. Because, you know, ten minutes in, we haven't even heard her name yet. So, Fuka, what are you going to do? I didn't even know that. Oh, that that hat is gone. Oh, there it is. Poor baby, it's just where are you going to stay? Oh God. Mm. You know, Puka is very, like, to herself. She's not shy, but, like I said, to herself. I like the color of her car. It seems like it's a Prius. Or no, it's something with a hatchback, of course. But it's a cute color.
Mm. Mm. I guess that's the day they have to close. That or probably have enough money to keep the place open. I bet you that one's an Animal Crossing. Poor baby. so pretty oh my god mm. just give me all like oh, I love it so much oh my god so beautiful Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> I think that is her saying. Okay, I already freaking love this. This is cute. Um, Misa Kino, if that is her, because I think she, okay, because I'm allowed to say it like this. Who she sounds like, she sounds like Miku from the Quintessential Quintuplets, but just like more higher. But to me, she sound if this is her Seiyu, because Miku, no, no, no yeah, Miku Seiyu also voices this character in the Benzidi series, Kokoro. You can hear it in like her high voice at any time when she gets really happy for her. <laughs> it's almost this whole freaking episode but yeah I really enjoyed this I think this is really good I mean you know from their very first work that I saw which was the world in colors and if any of you have not seen that I highly recommend it it is really really good very underrated I think for their very one of the maybe like best things that they've done and I think this might officially be their second best but who knows I think Fuka is a very interesting character too. I want to know more about her past. It just seems like she tried and tried and of course she eventually said, you know what, I'm going to quit, but I'm going to still be there to support the rest of the girls in the, um, in her group and like kind of manage them, quote unquote, possibly. I'm not 100% sure on it. Um, so who knows? Yeah, that is her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got all, all my Benzity girls are still having stuff even after. Oh, so beautiful do you want to work here oh <laughs> oh my god but yeah Fuka I think right now Fuka is best girl mm-hmm Full guys, best girl. Something tells me that this journey, because this is a 24 episode series, of course, since I just found that out before I started watching this episode. Um, this journey Fuka is about to go on, it, it's going to help her possibly or inspire her to go back into the idol industry and with a. No, um, kind of to be a little more confident. As um, Lynn's character, the girl with like the purplish pinkish hair who was in the car who drove her to the aquarium she said that yes yeah, she is very quiet and she's very to herself you could see that she is and the fact is that you know she's quitting um the idol industry and she's moving on with her life and she's trying to figure out what she can do now and she feels like her dreams are ending and that she can't go back into the idol industry. I don't think it is like that. She can still become an idol. She just needs like a new um, a new way of thinking. She needs something to help her get back into it and to be inspired again. So teaming up with Misa, that's going to help. I, I do like the fact that the other two characters, the, the girl with the ponytail, the boy um, who is friends with Misa and the girl with the ponytail, and the guy who works at the aquarium all made an appearance in this first episode. I wasn't, like, likely, honestly, I was not expecting them to be in this first episode. I kind of was expecting them more to become, like, make their first, uh, uh, can't speak, make their first appearance in, like, episode two, three, or four, but, oh, God, to see everybody, like, oh, my God, I'm just, this was the most anticipated show for me besides, like, Kobayashi, um, freaking uh, Otome Game Season 2, and then, like, I think two other series, because, of course, 
one of them is a magical recorder but that ain't coming out until the end of the month but this like number one because of the fact is i loved pa's the world in colors because that was one of my like highly anticipated shows even though like when it started it wasn't the greatest and then by the time it finished it was one of those like hella number one underrated shows of the season for i think it was like fall 2018 or 2019 and I remember, like, I dropped it, and then I picked it back up, and then by the time I finished the last episode, I was a crying mess. And then after that, you know, my channel got taken away because, you know, copyright and ish like that. But, I, I mean, I really loved it. And so now that they're, you know, showing something else that is very similar, because Foka does remind me of the, the silvered hair girl from The World in Colors a lot, because both girls are very quiet and to themselves. Um, Misaki? Or no, we'll just call her Misa. Misa. Yeah, Misa. Misa reminds me of the girl who is the grandmother to the silver-haired girl in the World in Colors. Like I said, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Like, highly, highly recommend that show because you can see kind of like how each girl, one, one of the two girls are the two main leads, relate to the other two female leads of that show. And it's just so freaking gorgeous and oh my god like the art and the animation of that show brilliant brilliant even like oh my god they like they took everything that they did in the world in colors and they they went in this and they were like we're gonna up it like so much like the 3d the cgi looks so good on the fish like oh my god the water physics oh i'm about to be like <laughs> obsessed over water for 23 episodes but you know what i am okay with that so I'm really hoping and praying that by the end of this series, you know, Fuka's like, okay, I'm going to go back to Tokyo and I am going to go back into the idol industry and kick its ass like no matter what. Because I feel like this is really going to help her. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, who knows? This is only episode one and anything else could happen from episode two to the final episode. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episode one of the Aquatope and like... No, the Aqua Chopper Mike fan. I'm gonna get this title mixed up on so much. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like, really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel and make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad, and of course, I will see you guys officially, y'all, next Thursday for episode two. Bye, guys.